The one we'll use now is that the entropy of a solid is zero at absolute zero. All right, so what does that mean? This implies that there is an absolute scale of entropy. So let us look at just not a chemical reaction, not the change in entropy, but just let's look at the absolute entropy of something. And this is a temperature here, and we'll put this zero. The third law of thermodynamics says that at zero, the absolute entropy, not the entropy change for a chemical reaction, but the absolute entropy of a reactant or product is zero, right there. And then if you increase temperature, as we said in the last lecture, the entropy will increase, and you'll have something like this. So let's say increase it to uh, 298 room temperature. This means that, and how do you calculate these changes? Uh, remember from the lecture that uh, delta S can be equal to, what, N times heat capacity times the natural log of the final temperature divided by the initial temperature, T1, or, a lot of ways to calculate it, or N can be, or delta S can be equal to Q reversible over T for a phase change, and so on. So you can actually calculate entropy changes. You start at zero and calculate entropy changes as you heat up the substance, and say at there, 298, that's the absolute entropy at 298. Well, you can look at it as an entropy change from zeros, but the entropy at zero is zero. So that's the key point, that you have absolute entropies rather than changes in entropy. Now look at, let's look at standard enthalpy or of formation. So remember we talked about standard enthalpy, delta H, uh, standard enthalpy of formation. That means you take the elements in their standard state, 25 degrees, like a gas or liquid or so on, and that'll be the reactants, and then you form the products. So these are the elements, and this is the compound. And delta H for that process is a standard enthalpy formation. But you're always refer referencing that to the standard state that we picked is the state of the elements in at 25 degrees. For example, the standard state of hydrogen would be H2 gas. The standard state of water would be water liquid, one atmosphere pressure, and so on. On the other hand, we don't need to reference anything here to a standard state because we know that the entropy is zero. Let's just see that. All right, so here's a Wikipedia article on the standard enthalpy change uh, formation or standard enthalpy formation, giving it a data table. So let's go down here and uh, let's look at this table, this column. What we have here is standard enthalpy of formation. Note there's a delta there, standard enthalpy of formation, because it's the enthalpy of the compound minus the enthalpy of the elements in their standard state. On the other hand, if we do the same thing for standard entropies, note that there is no delta here. There's no delta. It's just S. It's just the absolute entropy of various compounds here. So that's interesting. So that's the point I want to get across, that now we have absolute entropies. We don't have to reference them to a standard state like we do for a standard enthalpies of formation, or as we'll learn, standard free energies of formation, and so on. So that's the uh, key point there. Three statements of the third law of thermodynamics, and this is the important one we'll be talking about now.